Hello everybody and welcome to the Plant-Based Revolution Summit where a collection of the top paid plant-based entrepreneurs have been brought together to share with you how you can create a full-time income online in the vegan niche doing what you love. Even if you're coming from a place of zero technical experience and don't have any followers on social media yet. Here you'll learn exactly what these entrepreneurs sell, how they sell it, and how they've built their audiences so you can do the same for yourself. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Plant-Based Revolution Summit. Today, I'm going to be interviewed by Nico Marino. That's right, Nico Marino is going to be interviewing me. I met Nico a couple weeks ago in Nashville at Funnel Hacking Live, which is a Click Funnels live event, which was super, super fun. And uh, I didn't know who Nico was. I sat on the bus, and then Nico sits next to me. We start talking. I ask him what he's all about, what he does, and he says he does webinars. I'm like, wow, me too. And we go into detail on that. Turns out he's a two comma club award winner and he helps people get set up with chat bot messengers, uh, messaging software. So um, if you want to learn anything about chat bot messaging, Nico is your guy. He's the ultimate. He's got awesome courses on that and offers coaching on that. So that's really cool. I'm excited to get into that. But for now, Nico's going to be interviewing me because I wanted to find someone in the industry who really knew webinars as well as, as I do. And Nico was the only guy I really know in person. So Nico, thanks so much for offering to do this interview with me. Absolutely. And thank you, Ted, for having me here. This is going to be pretty to be awesome. Here. Dude, how cool is that when we met on that bus that night? Dude, it was amazing. Like, I don't know. Like, I can't really remember. It was just like dark. And I was like, ooh, like, there's a seat. Like, that guy looks nice. And he has like his like camera and all this stuff. <laughs> And then, yeah, we just started talking and like, good vibes yeah. the whole time. Fun stuff. That was stuff. cool. That was really fun. Really, really fun event. And then the four days that, that followed, the three or four days that followed, those were super epic as well, eh? Yeah. And I feel like it was so funny. I feel like nonstop, we just kept like running into each other and like yeah. talking like multiple times a day, even though it was a huge event. So Yeah. Well, it's cool because like all the two comma club award winners, and for people who don't know what two comma club award winner is, it's someone who made a million dollars with a funnel using ClickFunnels specifically. And so you made your million with webinars selling a chatbot, uh, a chatbot messenger uh, uh, course, right? So I have a high ticket offer um, where it's like a done for you service. Okay. And that was kind of like the bulk of it. And then I also have like a course. Oh, so your high ticket thing is, is in addition to your course and that's what really brought in mo most of the money, not the course. Yeah. I mean, I would say like more, definitely most of it probably was the, I take it. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Cool. Well, I'd love to interview you uh, in the future about exactly how you've done that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Similar um, strategy, though, to what we're talking about today. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. And then, the, but the reason we kept running into each other is because, like, in, the, in that two comma club room, the only reason I was able to get in that room was because I had my camera and I was just voluntarily filming for ClickFunnels, shooting footage for them. So um, that's just worked out that way. It was really, really cool how that worked. But, um, yeah. So I met you and now, because had I not brought my camera, I wouldn't, this interview wouldn't be happening as it is right now. So amazing stuff. Um, totally. I know but, you had like the back access pass there. <laughs> <laughs> Super lucky, man. My, the stars align. For sure. <laughs> the stars align for sure. Um, and it turns out you were friends with, with Catherine, who ended up being my favorite speaker at the event. Uh, when I first saw her go on stage, I was like, who is this lady? I need to know who she is. She's amazing. And then um, yeah. you were friends with her. So I was like, wow, Nico, Nico's got the, the in with Catherine. <laughs> and now yeah. next week I'm going to Salt Lake and we'll be filming for Catherine and her event there. So um, that's amazing. awesome. And then, top secret though, but that's pretty awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah top, top secret stuff. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, let's, uh, let's get into the interview, dude. I'm, 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 I think you've got some questions lined up for me and I'm excited to see, uh, to see how I can help the, the viewers here out with some answers. Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive right in. So first question that I've got for you is, what was life like before you got started? Yeah, obviously it depends what age we're talking, but uh, I guess right before I got into it, I was, uh, I was just really, uh, so I worked at A&W and I was getting paid like six bucks an hour. And I always wanted, I always wanted like a nice life of like freedom, not having to worry about money. And so I also don't really not necessarily worry about money, but not necessarily having to worry about like work. I wanted my work to be super, super easy and fun. And so when I got this job at A&W, you know, it kind of, it kind of it wasn't that good at first, but I got better at flipping burgers and putting fries in the deep fryer and stuff. And um, I kind of, you know, prided myself on being good at, in the kitchen back there, despite it being some greasy work. But the pay just didn't add up. You know, six bucks an hour, dude. If you do the math on that, times that by 40, that's $240 for a week. 
So it's like less than a thousand dollars a month. Two hundred and forty dollars for a forty hours of work. It's insane. And so it just didn't add up. And it, it and I always wanted like a, my dream car. I always wanted like a dream house. And I always wanted like a really nice life. The money wasn't there. And so um, I went in and asked my boss for a raise one day. And I was hoping for like a dollar raise. I'm like, you can you just like get me up to seven bucks, you know? And I would, my mm-hmm. plan was like, just keep getting raises, you know? Yeah. But I asked for my very first raise. And uh, he's just like, dude, I can't do that. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you've only been here for like less than a year. I can't give you a raise. I'm like, oh my God, dude. So I just like, I got super pissed off, like emotionally. I built up so much emotion asking him the question. When he finally mm-hmm. rejected me, I was like, okay, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> um, so I quit. And I just like on the spot. No, I probably handed my two weeks or something, but okay. I, I definitely handed my resignation. And then I was like, okay, now I'm jobless. And now I really need money. So I went online, went on Google, and I'm like, how do you make money online? And that's when I had like my first ever epiphany of like, wow, there's a difference between profits and wages. I only knew wages. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, if I can just make a hundred bucks an hour, I'm set, you know? But turns out what I found online is like, Dude, the difference, of pro- the difference between profits and wages is so massive that, check this out, even if you were to make $100 an hour and you work 24 hours a day for an entire year, you still wouldn't make a million dollars. Yeah. That's insane math, right? It is and pretty, so, yeah. It's so I was like, okay, I need to figure out how to, I write that in there, I was like, I'm, I'm going to figure out this online thing. I'm going to figure out how to make a profit. Um, mm-hmm. But I had no idea where to start. Just like a lot of people think, oh, it sounds cool doing what you're doing, Nico. It sounds cool doing what you're doing, Ted, but I have no idea where to start. And so I just kind of like forget, forgot about it, put it on the shelf. Yeah. Went on with my life, ended up doing more research on like, oh, what other light bulb epiphanies can I have online? And I discovered like law of attraction. I discovered veganism and raw foods and these festivals around the world. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to go there. Um, so I went to this, this festival in New York one year and it was so awesome had the greatest time ever met this awesome community of people just like at click funnels how everyone's like all about funnels and making money online this festival i went to the woodstock fruit fest was all about like how to have like the healthiest diet and the healthiest body and live like the longest healthiest fittest life you know okay diseases no issues at all i was like that's cool that's my community so i love that community and it was great learned a lot about you know, fitness and health relationships and stuff and um showed up that festival like not being anybody really um and then the following year I go back to that festival, but um, between the first year and the second year, I released like this like really cool video of me like being a fruitarian triathlete, and it went like semi-viral in the, in the community. Oh, you were so a triathlete? I, yeah, yeah. So when I showed up to the festival the second year, people like now knew who I was, and I was like, "Oh, cool! This is what it's like to be a somebody, like being recognized and stuff." And I, I felt the power in that. And then the the third year, I come back to the festival. You know, I'm still broke. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with my money and stuff. I was doing some personal training at the time, um, but at this point now there was a, a class being led by a girl named Megan Elizabeth and Joey B. And mm-hmm. they were teaching how they made money online in the vegan niche. And I was like, that's so cool. I want to go to that class. So I went to that mm-hmm. class, right? And the class was packed, dude. It was like an indoor room. It was like, it was like rooms for like 50 people. And there was like a hundred people in there. It was, people was packed. Everyone wanted to learn how to make money online. And what was so cool, I remember, is they gave everyone in the audience notebooks and pens. So everyone in the notebook had like a notebook and pen. They were all like furiously taking notes and, I was curious uh-huh. to taking notes just like everyone else. And one thing they kept saying is like, automate, automate, automate. I just yeah. wrote down like automate in big caps. Like, <laughs> one automate. I'm like, that's my big takeaway. I don't know what that means or how to do it, but I got to automate. And so I left that festival, bro. I was so excited. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. Like she, I saw her, she, she said she was selling eBooks and coaching and, and, and stuff. And all she does is go to bed and wakes up and she's got money and that's so cool. And I go home all excited. And again, I don't know where to start. Like, at least now I have an idea of what to do. I really don't know where to start. So you asked, like, what was it like life before? It's like, I just wasn't clear on what the hell I could offer or how to offer it. Um, but then what was so crazy right. is then a couple summers later, I met this girl. Um, and by this point, I'd been putting a lot more YouTube videos, a lot more content online, becoming much more of a, somebody in the niche, in the vegan niche, raw vegan niche specifically. I met this girl at a festival. She recognized me from my videos. She was just blowing up at the time, too. She was, like, going viral, like, big time viral hundred thousand to a million views on your videos and i recognized her i was like wow she's cool she's dope um we hit it off right away and she ended up inviting me to come live with her in hawaii and she's like oh you should come live with me uh, we can create content together and i'm like oh my god this is like my in i'm like i'm like set now all i gotta do is just like make content with this chick and we're good and so she's like yeah you can actually come uh, we have a spare room come live with me and my roommate i'm like cool who's your roommate she's like joey b i was like no way 
the guy who taught it that first year. And the same guy. Years, yeah, like same guy. He's, he's like my mentor. And I was like, that's the guy. They'd be like, you know, going to go live with Nico. You know, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> that's insane. It's so unreal. Plus this girl, right? And so this is the power of association. It's so strong, right? You know what that's like, hanging out with the right people. Um, and so I hang with Joey and I'm asking Joey, I'm like, Joey, like, how come like every time I try and sell something online, like an ebook or something, it just doesn't sell. I just get crickets. He's like, oh, dude, you got to use funnels. And I was like, what are funnels? You know, I had no idea what a funnel was. And mm-hmm. he showed me click funnels. And I was like, oh my God, this is sick. Show me the click funnels community. And right away, dude, right away, I was like, okay, this whole click funnels thing is kind of like that Woodstock Fruit Festival thing where everyone's just like, they know their shit and they're all getting results. And all I have to do is like learn from everyone in this ClickFunnels community. So I started studying, started studying, started studying and um, put together my first ever 30 day raw food challenge with a funnel, sold that, made thousands. And that was how I first made, made my money um, with, was with a 30 day raw food challenge using ClickFunnels. So nice. that was super exciting. Um, and then from there, a bunch of other stuff happened. Some I ended up losing all the money and then making it all the game, but that's, maybe we'll get to it in this interview. I'm not sure, but that's how kind of like my life was before. That's how I kind of got into where I'm at now. Gotcha. Awesome. Gosh, well, sounds like quite the roller coaster <laughs> so far. Yeah. Uh, the next question that I've got for you. So then what was your first inclination to get started? Uh, first you may inclination, have kind of like covered it, but yeah. Yeah. First inclination was probably the festival, just like learn, getting them to show me like what they did. And then as soon as I found out they were doing eBooks, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do eBooks. So I tried to do the eBooks and it didn't work. Like nobody bought a few people bought, but it was mostly crickets, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was pretty much the first inclination, just getting, quitting my job and then figuring out online that there was a thing called profits that my dad didn't teach. My mom didn't teach school didn't teach because they, they didn't know. They didn't know. Yeah. They knew they would have taught me. So, I had to figure it out for myself and through mentors and stuff. So that was my first inclination. Okay. Gotcha. And what did you have to battle through to actually get started? Uh, just the lack of clarity of what the hell to offer and how to offer it. What to offer and how to offer it. Um, and then once I did get started, dude, like, so I made the money with the 30 day raw food challenge thing. And I was like doing well. I was like, hell yeah. Like this thing just like sells itself basically. You know, you know how it is, right? Like you just wake up and you're just like, holy shit, this many people bought. That's insane. <laughs> it's crazy. It just, it just sells. It just works really, really well if you do it right. Um, and I learned how to do it right through, through the ClickFunnels community. And I'm so grateful for that. Now it's what I teach all my students. I'm just like, here's what I did. So what I ended up doing later is um, I ended up putting together a course teaching my students how to... Uh, well, the reason I ended up, so I did 30 day raw food challenge thing, made a bunch of money, put that money towards a festival. I was like, I want to create my own Woodstock fruit festival, you know, I create my own Woodstock mm-hmm. fruit festival in Canada. So I started the Canada fruit festival. First ever Canada fruit fest is like the biggest four day vegan event in Canada. Super, super cool. That's insane. And yeah. We had like a couple hundred people come out, 250 people and it was awesome. We had such a good time. We had music. We had best fruit, all you can eat, like awesome attendees, tons of volunteers, like Big event. It was sick. It was like a mini funnel. It was like a mini funnel hacking life. Dang. Um, and the thing is, bro, I didn't know what I was doing creating a festival. I knew what I was doing using funnels to create an online course, but not use, creating a festival. And so mm. the things, I just, I was a noob at the time. And what ended up happening was we had like 400 people sign up for the festival. But then like last minute, within like the last week, but like 150 people asked for a refund. Because oh. we, we, did, we said, hey, the refund date is like the week before the festival, which is so stupid. But we had like 100 people refund. And I'm like, shit, well, there's a shitload of money, and, which we've already spent on like making the festival super dope. Because the goal was to take all the money from the first year, spend it all, make no profit, and just have a sick festival. And then have, create such hype around for the next year, and then we can make profit. But what ended up happening was we spent all the money, and then we got all those refunds, and now we're in debt. And the goal was for me to split the profit with my homie but he didn't have the money to make up for it. So I was like, okay, I'll just buy out the debt and I'll make the festival my own. So I ended up eating all the debt. I was in like mega debt now. And bro, like, I don't know if you've ever had a bank account at $0, but the feeling sucks. Okay. I had it at negative. Okay. Well, this is the thing. So the, the feeling of having it at $0 <laughs> is one thing. It's horrible. You can't buy anything unless you go to debt and further, but to have your credit cards in like mega debt multiple credit cards in mega debt like we're talking like 30,000 plus in debt it's a horrible feeling and yeah. this isn't with like a student loan or anything this is just like a, a failed entrepreneurship project mm-hmm. um 
a fail depends how you look depends how you look at it right there's a, it was yeah. a lot of learning lessons it was like a thirty five thousand dollar lesson basically but point is i lost a shield of money it felt like crap i didn't know what to do and so i was like i gotta do a, I gotta clear my head i gotta do like a dopamine fast i can completely clear my head into a dopamine fast here and dopamine fast for those who don't know it means you quit the internet you quit food you quit talking to friends you just have no dopamine at all released for an extended period of time. So I did seven day dopamine fast. So I was at rock bottom, bro. So I couldn't afford rent. I couldn't afford a car. I was like, my friend would drive me around. I'd just sleep at a friend's house, couldn't pay rent, nothing. And so I was like, I need to clear my head. So I did the dopamine fast, which is basically an extended water fast as well, seven days. And then during that period, bro, like I got crystal clear on what I had to do to pull myself out of it. I was really? like, crystal clear during that fast. Yeah, because you have no input. The only thing you're doing is output. The only thing you're doing is brainstorming. Mm-hmm. But for seven days, I was brainstorming, getting all my ideas out, getting all my ideas out, all my ideas out. And what was crazy is right before I did that, I listened to this audiobook. Right? Ah, Expert Secrets. Okay. I listened to Expert Secrets right before, dude. And my mind was like, bam, like, talk about like light bulb moments. I was having firework moments, bro. Like, mm-hmm. So I got all the information in, and there was like information overload, kind of like you get a funnel hacking live. And I was like, yeah. I need to clear my head and just digest this stuff. And so I just started brainstorming on everything I just learned from the book. And I was like, I'm going to create a course on how I made the money with my 30 day raw food challenge. I'm going to do it in the vegan niche, teach vegans how to launch their own courses, their own coaching programs, launch their own eBooks, how to make money online, just like I did in the past. And it just felt really right to do that because I know it really well. I know it's a big issue for a lot of people. So I'm going to do that course. So I ended up creating a course and I called highway success. It was freaking awesome. Went on to making me thousands like right away. It was so cool. And then I was like, yeah, that was dope. I'm going to put together a course now on how I sold Highway Success. So I created another program called Total Funnel Mastery. Went on to teach specifically how I sold this course using webinars. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when I sold the 30-Day Raw Food Challenge thing, I didn't use a webinar. I just sold used purely a funnel, you know. But once I sold the the course on how to create the 30-Day Raw Food Challenge, now I knew how to use webinars. Now I created a new course on teaching how to use webinars. And um, that's really how it all went down, dude. That's really how it all began. Like how, how I made it into like the 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 the, 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 the mini big field, <laughs> if you will. Nice, dude. That's quite the journey. Gosh. Yeah. So that that's a long story short, if you will. <laughs> For sure. So the next question that I have down, maybe you already answered this part way, but I want to ask, like, what challenges did you have once you got started? Yeah, that was it, dude. I just spent the money and that lost it. it. I spent yeah. the money and lost it. Once I got started from 30 off a challenge, put the money towards a festival, which is super epic. Everyone had a good time uh, except me with the bank money. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that was a big challenge was pulling myself out of that, getting out of debt, uh, using the same, same tactics that I now teach people to get out of debt themselves, like how to put together a course, how to sell that. Wow. Yeah. That's super powerful. Yeah. Cool. So how do you make your money right now then? It's, uh, I have, I have a few income streams, but probably the number one income stream, like we all have, I mean, most people have like that singular one big income stream. And for me, that's course sales with webinars. Mm-hmm. So sell, selling my courses with webinars, um, selling Total Funnel Mastery is the big one. Um, and oh, then from there, yeah. I have an inner circle as well that people can join and that's kind of like tied in with that. So it's my, uh, yeah, we were joking yesterday, you and I. Have <laughs> inner circle. <laughs> inside joke about inside, inside circle versus outside circle, outer circle, yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to be in the Ted Carr inner circle. <laughs> <laughs> right now you're in the outer circle, bro, but at least you're in the circle. <laughs> on someday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I have an inner circle and I have a course uh, that I, I teach, and that's how I bring in all my money. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So, question that I have for you, and I'm sure everybody that's listening is curious, like, what's an average day in the life for you with your work now? I love that question. This is the question I love to ask everyone. I'm like, what's, I want to go like film everyone's day in the life. It'd be so fun to just put together like a documentary <laughs> of like 12 people who are crushing it and showing like their mornings to, to evening. Um, I was at the round table at, at Funnel Hacking Live, but I sat beside Dan Henry. I got there early. I sat beside, I sat at this table and then Dan oh, Henry yeah, you told me. right next to me. He was so sick. And uh, I didn't know he was going to sit right beside me. It was just, luck i guess um but i knew that was his table but i ended up asking him i was like dude like what's the day in life look like for you and i don't know if he's serious he's kind of like savage sometimes right with his answers but he's just like he's just like um 
He's like, I don't know. I wake up, smoke some weed, play some video games, hang out with my kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I was like, really? I was, he's like, yeah. And I was like, I asked him this one question too, which I was like holding back, but I wanted to know. I was like, so like, I was like, at what time like, do you check your emails? You know, cause I, I, I try not to check my email first thing in the morning, right before bed. For me, I like mm-hmm. sometime middle of the day. Um, Same. And, and he's like, he looked at me and he's like, why would I check my email? And I was like, well, for like, you know, people have questions or something. He's like, I don't check that. And I was like, all right, well, what time do you check your DMs? He's looked at me. He's like, why would I check my DMs? And I was like, damn, dude, good point. Why would you <laughs> check your DMs? So people play at different levels. Right? So Dan's at that level where he wakes up, smokes weed, plays video games, hangs out with his kid, whatever, and somehow makes millions. But um, mere mortals like myself, I, um, I wake up and I, first thing I do, dude, it's so important. I wake up. And I grab, I don't have it with me, but I have, um, I have a notebook mm-hmm. that I go to bed with every night. So every night, I, was, I just like to start my day off the night before. So at eight o'clock the night before, I go down to my bed. My phone is upstairs charging. It's not down in my room at all. I'm not nowhere tempted. Phone's upstairs. I come downstairs and I get into bed with my notebook and I brainstorm out all my cool ideas that I had that day mm-hmm. that I want to maybe experiment with the next day, as well as write down a list of the things I actually have to do tomorrow. Like today I had Nico at nine. I had it confirmed to my end, dude. I don't so, know what you're sure. saying. Just yeah. <laughs> it was so, on my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I, I, I wrote down the stuff I got to do plus like the stuff I want to play around with. And today I want to play around with putting together a free course. I want to put, launch a free course called um, Total Offer Clarity. We we'll bring something yesterday with you about that. Mm-hmm. And so I woke up this morning, created that funnel. I sent it to you already. You checked it out. You're like, oh, that's really cool, right? So I woke up and I executed on my list that I wrote the night before. And now here we are doing the, the, the interview. So um, I wake up and I just execute on that list right away. I used to wake up and meditate first thing in the morning and do that thing. But now what I do is if I'm going to do something like that, I go out and have a shower and I have a cold shower. So I start hot and then I go cold just to get my state of mind like really fired up. Because dude, if you have a hot shower and you get, you're in that shower for like 10, 15 minutes, you get out of it, you feel like a sluggish piece of crap. You just had a hot shower. Yeah, you're you're so lazy. lazy. Yeah, you're so lazy, dude. After hot shower. It's just, and that's just the nature of the chemistry that happens when water hit, hot water hits you. And so the opposite happens with cold water. If you want to get fired up, no caffeine needed. You mm. just like, boom, you got like passion flowing through you. Like you're excited for life. You got, you're flowing. Um, cold water is where it's at. So because I'm a little exactly. baby, I go in there and I start out with a hot shower. First five minutes, whatever. Put the soap on, do my things, clean myself. And then before I get out, cold shower, boom, get fired up. I do, oh, I do the five by five. Five seconds on the front, five seconds on the side, five seconds on the back, side and the front again. Um, so that's my that's my little morning routine. And then I get to work, man. I stick to the list. Nice. And, and a, an app I love to use is called Focusmate. I use that app called Focusmate. Focusmate? Yeah. M-A-T-E. Okay. I've never heard of it. It's sick. It's basically you go on and you pick a date and time that you want to work. And you work with someone on webcam like this, but they're muted and you're muted. Or you can unmute if you want to talk to each other. But you basically mute and you just get to work for an hour. And you have like an hour of focused work. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it's like, it's kind of like accountability. Yeah. yeah. But like, okay, silence. So sick. I highly recommend it. at least, at least use it once just to see how much more productive you are for that 50 minute block. They go in 50 minutes. Yeah. Cause like, you know, someone's watching. Yeah. It's that's like, a great idea. I love it's that. Like, it's like going to the gym with someone, like you're working out with someone. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're like actively doing something with someone. And I like to use it for things that I, don't really like to do like maybe organizing my files or maybe like I got to clean up a funnel or something, or maybe like mm-hmm. fix a webinar slide or do, do some customer support work. Then I'll, I'll, um, I'll do that. But if it's something that I love to do like video editing or create funnels, like I don't use focus for that. Cause that for me is already flow state, mm-hmm. but if I need help getting into flow state, I go on focus me. Love it. So that's, that's my day in life. And then I, I eat nice. at noon. I stop eating at four. And around noon, I'll go to the gym. So today at 11 o'clock, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to get a good pump in. I'm going to go to get a haircut at noon. And then I'm going to eat my food around 1. I'm probably going to stop eating at, at 5 tonight. Nice. So you do, do you do intermittent fasting, it sounds yeah. like? Yeah, intermittent fasting. Cool. Me too. Nice, bro. What, what you eating with that? Right now, I'm doing one meal a day. So usually from like 2 to 4-ish. Beautiful. I'm about, I'm, about, yeah, I'm about the same, except... Um, Two to four for my main meal, and then like a, maybe like an hour or two after that, I sometimes have a little protein shake or something. Gotcha. But, uh, still, it's in like a four or five hour window for sure. That's awesome you're doing that, bro. You notice good good benefits? Yeah, I just find like 
increased focus and clarity and two is like much less hunger dude that's the thing There's, which is weird like you think the it's the opposite thing, man. Yeah. it's so crazy people and and i understand why people say oh, i could never do it i get hungry of course you get hungry because your ghrelin hormone gets released every time you eat on the next day right same time so you and me our ghrelin hormone gets released at the same time we eat every day which is i guess yeah. one o'clock um and it doesn't get released outside of those windows because we've trained ourselves to eat in that window and so yeah less hunger which results in less cravings Mm -hmm. which results in oh yeah cravings, cravings are like yeah. completely gone Dude, they're no a thing cravings. of the past it's a crazy no side craving. benefit it's a side benefit of intermittent fasting yeah. so that's one thing but the other thing the main one is really just the increased productivity for sure mm -hmm. like, we're, not, we're not in the kitchen thinking about food we're just like getting work getting stuff done with, with oh, meat totally. so yeah, yeah. I love that. and it's just like yeah gosh the, the lack of cravings and like the lack of just thinking about and wanting food yeah. literally like it just the time comes to eat and like you're just like okay i don't it's not that i don't care but it's like okay cool like here's food and then like yeah. you're done and it's just out of your mind and it's, it's just so much easier too because you got nothing else in your system yeah so that's awesome dude cool we should do it and then we'll do another interview later about the benefits yeah of fasting. Intermittent fasting love it cool man okay so the next question that i've got for you is what do you say when people say that the vegan market is too saturated so if any market is too saturated it means a couple things. Number one, it means it's a proven market. It's a proven market. It's like, it's like seeing a bunch of people being successful at, um, at one thing and then saying like, oh, I'm not going to do that too because they're already being successful. It's like, no, that's why you should do it because they're, they're already being successful. Like just mm -hmm. do what they're doing and have your own spin on it. Be yourself, be the Nico Marino version of it and, and you'll crush it. Like it's, it's a proven market. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. It's a proven market. You already know it works. The other really cool thing is, is because it's a proven market, you can learn so much on how to do it. You're not needing to reinvent the wheel. You yeah. just, you just, you just uh, funnel hack, as Russell mm -hmm. says. You just model what's already working. And so it's already a proven offer. It's already a proven niche. You just have to go get some help and like kind of model how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so even like the way the summit is being put together, like someone could model the summit, do a very similar summit, the way you're doing a chatbot messenger webinar, someone could model that. The way I do my total funnel mastery webinar, someone can model that. It's a proven, it's a, there's a proven way, it's a proven roadmap. So that, that's a huge thing right there. Um, and then the opposite is like, would you actually want to do something that's like, there's no proven market for? Like if the market was completely exactly. unsaturated, would you want to be the guy who goes and invents like, um, like, I don't know, like SD card holder um, cases? Like, do you want to be the guy who tries to crush it with SD card holder cases? Like good luck being that crazy inventor, you know, that's like the crazy inventor who works in his lab all like the time trying yeah. to, trying to like, like no. you know, if it's going to work. Yeah. We're going to a saturated market. You already know what's going to work. You just need to stand out a bit. And there's proven ways of standing out using the click funnels method, using hook story offer and, um, and different tactics like that. So definitely, man, a uh, pr proven market is the way to go. The saturated market is the way to go. Yeah. Oh, obviously, Absolutely. obviously the other thing too, though, is to create your own blue ocean within that. So, so you have your saturated market, like let's say, um, let's say chatbot messengers, but then you become like the chatbot messengers for, vegans or you become the chatbot messengers for consultants mm -hmm. you know um yeah. you just you just create your own little blue ocean so for me it was like raw veganism was the was the was the red ocean there's a raw vegan niche raw food niche was like very popping community and i stood out because i'm like i'm the fruitarian triathlete mm -hmm. i'm in that niche but i'm the only fruitarian triathlete and so all yeah, the attention was on me it was so easy to get attention because i was the only one doing that mm -hmm. Um, and so you, people have got to find out like what's unique about them. And that's how you stand out in a saturated market, create that blue ocean. Perfect. Love that. And this actually, that leads perfectly into this next question, which is what advice do you have for people who are finding their own niche or mm. niche? Yeah, dude. So this is, this is a great one. I'm actually gonna do a whole course on this coming up. Um, it's going to be called total offer clarity. And part of that is like getting clear on your niche, right? Because your offer is going to depend on your niche. If you're in the, the football niche, you're not going to be offering fishing rods. Mm -hmm. In dirt bike niche, you're not going to be offering pom poms for ballerinas and dancers, like you know, <laughs> dirt bike stuff. So your offer is going to depend on your niche. And so the way to find your niche is really like 
the easiest way at least for me was to just like think like what kind of person am I and start identifying yourself and then that's going to determine like who you can really help like I, I can help vegans a lot easier than I can help people doing keto paleo mm -hmm. I can help um, guys clear their acne a lot easier than girls clean their acne I understand the guy thing I don't understand the girl thing um, with, with acne um, right. I can help people go 100% fruit and live in Thailand because I was doing that. You know, I can help the triathletes get better at swimming, biking, and running because I was doing that. Mm. Um, and now I can help people with webinars because I'm doing that. You can help people with chatbots because you're doing that. And so, like, look at who you are, and then that's going to determine like, your audience. And then it's so easy then to say, okay, what problems are my audience members having? What problems right. are people hosting webinars having? What problems are triathletes having? Mm. And then you start coming up with things that, that you think can really help them out, that have helped you out. You know, so for me with, with, um, with, with, uh, with my diet, one of the biggest things that's helped me out was intermittent fasting. So now every time I do a video on intermittent fasting, people are like, wow, that's such great advice. I love your content. Thank you so much. So it's so easy for me to get people to love my content because I'm just helping them with the same problems I already overcame. Mm -hmm. and, and the niche kind of like, I don't really think you need to like pick the niche. It kind of like develops itself. You'll, you'll see it in time. It's not really something you need to be like super objective about ahead of time. It's something that will kind of reveal itself to you. Um, the more clear you get on like on your offer and who you really are and who you want to help. Did you find the same thing for you? Right. Yeah. I think it's so much easier to figure out the type of person that you want to help mm -hmm. and what you can help them with. And then it's just like fitting the niche to that. It's just like, it's almost automatic. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, absolutely. Cool. Cool. So next question that I got for you is what is your self talk like when you feel lazy or low energy or doubtful? Nice. Uh, what do you, yeah, what is yeah dude, like? this comes up uh, frequently for entrepreneurs. Like I know I'm not alone. I know yeah. I'm not the only one. Thank God. Like we go through crazy <laughs> highs and lows, right? We think one day we're a genius. We figured it out. We figured out this new thing that makes something so easy. And then a couple of weeks later, we're like, holy crap, I'm screwed. I've got to file for bankruptcy, you know? And then we go back and forth like, no, I figured it out. And then, no, I'm an idiot and this sucks. I don't even want to do this anymore. Maybe I should go become a monk in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. So thank God I studied um, Grant Cardone. I'm part of the, uh, the 10X family. I studied Grant Cardone. Ah, there you and go. I love, there's one chapter in his book. I think he talks about like the four types of people, four types of entrepreneurs. And one of the types is like the retreater. And so every time I'm thinking like, oh, I should just quit and give this up or whatever. Like, this is too hard. It's all this technical shit trying to figure out ClickFunnels and Aweber and, and chatbots and, and um, all this different software, a Zoom, video recording, all this stuff. I'm like, I just want to retreat. I want to go like be a monk in the Himalayas. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I hear Grant Cardone. He's like, you're a retreater. I was like, I don't want to be a retreater. I don't want to oh, be a retreater. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I instantly identify. I'm like, wow, I'm just being a retreater right now. I'm just being a little baby. So I'm like, dude, pony up, let's go, strap up your boots and let's figure it out. And so it's, it's always about just figuring it out. And what's cool is like someone else has already figured it out. Any issue or stumbling block you're facing, whether it's with your health or your relationship or your business, no matter how unique you think it is, mm -hmm. someone else has already had that very similar problem has already figured it out. And that's what I oh, love right. about being in inner circles. I love getting coaching from people, I love getting mentoring from people because they've already figured it out. Mm -hmm. and, and, and oftentimes they figured it out before you even had that problem. Yeah. So they're like, like, oh, Nico, you were going to launch that? And you're like, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 launch this instead. You're like, oh, wow, that's a way better idea, right? So had you not been in that mm -hmm. inner circle, got that coaching, you would have done and launched that. And like that, in hindsight, clearly wouldn't have worked. But because you got the coaching, you knew in advance, hey, I should actually just do that. And so yeah. um, in part two of this interview, where we go over the 30-day game plan, you know, we're going to be giving people some really awesome stuff from the 30 day game plan, letting them know exactly what to do from day one to day 30 and all the mistakes to please avoid. Don't waste 30 days not doing these 30 things or these however many things there are in the 30 day plan. But people might like, you know, watch this interview and be like, okay, I'm going to create my own 30 day plan and then go for it. But then they're missing out on all the really cool things that we're going to be sharing with them in the 30 day plan in part two of this interview. So um, the, my self talk to answer the question is like, just reminding myself that like, I don't want to be a retreater, identifying with being a retreater and being, I don't want to be that retreater. And then realizing that someone else has already figured it out. That makes me feel relief. Like, well, someone, someone out there, I don't know who, but someone else has already figured it out. 
And then the other thing is like, it all comes down to then just getting clear, getting clarity. And so rather than self-talk, I more so go through a, a physical practice of like shutting my laptop, putting my phone away, shutting off the music and taking out a notebook and just brain dumping, just dumping out all my thoughts, all my ideas, all my mm-hmm. concerns, all my worries. And as soon as I started doing that, bro, it's just like, Within within like five minutes, I'm like, oh, now I'm clear on what I, what my next step is, you know. Nice. Yeah. Know exactly what to do now, and the clear when the clarity comes, like the excitement comes, the energy comes back, the passion comes back. You're like, okay, I'm living my life purpose again. But the state of mind five minutes ago versus five minutes later is like night and day. Um, and so in those moments of darkness, it's easy to say I want to quit, but dude, like you're just being a retreater at that point which you can be, go ahead. Not, nothing wrong with being a retreater. I got mad respect for, for people who, who, who do whatever they want to do with their life. But um, for me, it's like right now I'm at a point in my life where I just want to crush this entrepreneurship thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's so fun. I'm making progress every day and I love it. Even when I feel like I'm slipping back, I'm still learning massive lessons I can share with my students. And that's what I love about being a teacher, man. I'm sure you know the same thing. It's like anytime you make a mistake, you can then teach your students what not to do. Yeah. So. Totally. Big time. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So next question that I've got for you is, and I'm sure everybody's curious, how do you grow your following? Oh, yeah. Well, there's different platforms. Um, I guess I'll focus on um, the two platforms I focus on really is YouTube and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what it comes down to, you can't beat it, is quality and quantity. You need quality content and you need a quantity of it. So on YouTube, I recommend a video a day for growing your channel. That's what I did. That's what other people are doing. Look at Casey Neistat, video a day. Absolutely crushed it, right? It became super, super popular because there's also the quality. It wasn't just mm-hmm. quantity for the sake of quantity. It was quantity with quality. Right. So I know, I know people who've done really, really well for themselves without that much quality, but just pure, sheer quantity, and they do well. Other people, um, they maybe do a lot less quantity, but the quality is so good. And it's like, why put yourself at risk and do one or the other when you could do both? Like just put out quality on a regular basis. And so a really cool hack is to use the binge creation method or batch creating where Mm -hmm. you sit down, you record like a hundred videos or even 10 videos and then you auto schedule them for the next 10 days or the next week or the next few months. Mm -hmm. That way you're not having to create content every single day. Yeah. Some days you don't feel like it. Some days your throat's sore. Some days you're sick. Some days you're away on vacation. Like you just don't want to create content. You can't create content. So you spend one day doing it all and you can create enough content for like the next six months, basically. Uh, I know Peng Jun does this. I know Mm -hmm. Marley Jacks does this. Uh, I'm not sure if you do this, but binge creating, man, it's so awesome. And so um, the quantity and quality need to be there. And um, I I recommend on YouTube once a day video and then – on instagram three posts a day so three feed posts a day okay. in addition to five stories a day throughout the day that way you're always staying relevant you're always staying on people's feed um that in addition to doing shout for shout like giving people shout outs um even doing interviews like if you do an interview with someone you can give them a shout out saying hey i just interviewed nico and then nico's much more likely to say hey ted just interviewed me or vice versa because mm-hmm. hey, yeah. yeah. nico now nico's gonna get some precarious following him you know so that's awesome. <laughs> um, that's one way of doing it, doing interviews. Um, but uh, just being active in the DMs, being active in the comments, really help grow your following as well. Not not just okay. not just um, quantity of following, but quality of following. Because yeah, of, I've seen you're crushing it on Instagram. Like yeah, good I, I, I grow my Instagram because I just put out a lot of I think high quality content. And um, always, always engaging with people too. That's really, really helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, making it a rule, like three posts a day, five stories a day for your Instagram. Mm. And then um, on YouTube, one bit a day. Like I don't go to bed unless the video's up that day. And thank God I auto schedule them so I actually don't need to think about it every day. Mm. But that's how you grow it. And then now, of course, you know, using hashtags and distributing it, like sending it to um, sitting on Facebook and TikTok and Snapchat, letting people know that you exist, getting, getting everywhere mm-hmm. as possible. Being omnipresent with your content is, is important. Yeah. Awesome. And it, that, that's without ads. Obviously I, I, I haven't done the ads much yet, but um, that's all organic. Yeah. Organic. You're falling a lot faster with ads. Cool. 
Nice. So with all that stuff in mind, then what's your number one biggest productivity hack to get more stuff done throughout the day? I pretty much, uh, yeah, it's going to be planning the day the night before. Okay. Planning the day the night before. So plan tomorrow nice. today. That's the hack. Plan tomorrow. There needs to be a word for that, but maybe we'll call it just pre-planning. Yeah. Uh, there should be a word for that. There must be. We'll, we'll call it pre-planning <laughs> for now. Uh, but yeah, I learned that one from Jim Rohn. He's just like the number one tip is just to write a list of everything you need to do the following day, put the most important thing at the top, and when you wake up, do the most important thing first. And Brian Tracy calls it eating that frog. Yeah, eating the frog. Okay. Eating the frog. That's what Brian gotcha. Tracy calls it. I don't really like that. <laughs> I don't really like to eat frogs, but um, I do it love It puts a eat weird frogs. visual in your head. Yeah, I like to get work done that I enjoy doing. So um, waking up this morning, working on that funnel for the total uh, offer clarity was super, super exciting, super fun. Doing this mm -hmm. interview is super exciting, super fun. But I still have to write it down the day before so I can um, remember to do it and um, do, it, do it well. So that's yeah. probably the number one hack. And then putting the phone away and using Focusmate to stay productive throughout the day on things I don't necessarily want to do. That's a huge one as well. Um, yeah, that's a good, another one. good tip. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, those are all the questions that I've got for you. I know you have some other stuff that you definitely want to talk about too, though. Yeah, well, let's get into part two. And part two is going to be cool. We go over the 30-day game plan from what people, for what people can do if they're starting from uh, day one and they have no following and they have, they have no, no reputation, they have no money, all they have is a ClickFunnels account, an internet connection, and the knowledge that I have now that I'm going to be giving them. So um, this is exactly what I would do if I had to start over from square one. And this is what I still do on a regular basis because it's so freaking effective. And I'm sure you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna um, resonate with a lot of it. I'm sure you yeah. do like bang on. That's exactly what you gotta do anyway. So this is like a 30 day game plan for success. So I'm excited to get into it. Thanks so much for the interview, Nico. Excited to get into part two. Um, All right, awesome. Before, before we get into part two, where can people find more information about you? Uh, you can find out about me at nicomoreno.org or you can just search me on YouTube, Nico Moreno. Awesome. And, and I look Nico. like this, and I'm not a death metal rock artist. Because <laughs> there's another Nico Moreno on YouTube who's like a death metal artist. <laughs> so it's not him, it's this one. Okay, and your Instagram is That's Nico it. Moreno Official, right? Yeah. Okay, nice. I'm not super active on Instagram. Okay, but I've, I've, I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I pro I know, gosh, if you like messaged me and I didn't reply, like, sorry. <laughs> oh, good, good. Cool, man. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate the interview, and excited to get into part two here. One thing I really want to emphasize is throughout the 30 days, there's, there's a rule that must be followed. And that rule is content must go out every day. You can't wait a week or two to start putting content. The content is, immediately has to go day one. And so before we even get into day one, let's talk about day zero, which is like the prep, like okay, tomorrow's the big day. Um, day zero. And I just want to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Canada Vegan Fest, for bringing together hundreds of vegans every summer in Canada from all around the world. See you there at canadaveganfest.ca.